Hello, this is your guide for Friday, June 19th in Work Packet 6. Please put your name here so I know who did the work. And this is our last day of homework before summer. We did it. At the end of the video, we'll go on Epic Books and listen to one more story. But first, let's do our work. Let's practice the letter R. Uppercase R, lowercase r. Color the pictures and trace the letters. Okay. So, rain. R, A, I, N. Rocket. R, O, C, K, E, T. Rat. Red Rainbow R A I N B O W Run R U N Rock R O C K Rabbit R A B B I T and Rose R O S E and down here raindrops rain drops raindrops keep falling on my head da, da, da. and if you want with your colors you can color in these raindrops and the lightning bolt and down here uppercase and lowercase r so uppercase top to bottom bubble around and then come down Top to bottom, then bubble around, come down. Top, bottom, bubble, down. Top, bottom, bubble, down. Top, bottom, bubble, down. Top, bottom, bubble, down. Finish the rest, and lowercase. Top, bottom, up and around. 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 And finish the rest, please. Okay, let's move on to the daily language review. Read the word, read the definitions. Against. Against can mean toward, to try hard to do better than, to not agree. So can mean different things. Write against in each sentence, then write the meaning of against. Number one, I am against cutting down the big tree. I am against cutting down the tree. Against means toward, to try to do better than, or to not agree. So if you're against cutting the tree down, you don't agree. So to not agree. Number two, he threw the ball against the wall. He threw the ball against the wall. Against means toward this time. So you can see how the same word can mean different things. Number three, she raced against the other runners. She raced against the other runners to try hard to do better than. Against means to try, we'll just say to try to do better than, to save space. To try to do better than. She raced against them. Use against to write a sentence, then write the meaning of against. Uh, Caillou uh, What did he do? Okay, Caillou tossed his burger against 
the TV. Caillou tossed his burger against the TV. He would do that. So against means toward, to try hard to do better than, to not agree. So it's like this one. He threw the ball against the wall. Caillou tossed the burger against the TV. So against means toward. He threw it at the TV. Bad Caillou. Very bad. Okay, story time. They flew. Please read the story and answer the questions. We'll see the letters EW come together. Sounds like ew, ew, like new, that's oo, new, few, uh, 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 and chew, grew, do, new, flu. Okay, let's look at the picture. I see a little birdie and there's a leaf with some morning dew on it. Dew is like the little water droplets you see on on plants in the morning or on grass. Number one, what was in the nest? Number two, what did the birds chew? Number three, why was Drew sad? They flew. Drew saw a new nest in the tree. It had a few baby birds. Mama bird would bring them worms. The birds would chew and chew. They grew and grew. They drank the morning dew. One day they were gone. Drew was sad. He knew they flew away. Number one, what was in the nest? Drew saw a new nest in the tree. It had a few baby birds. A few baby birds. Uppercase at the start. A few baby birds. Period. Number two, what did the birds chew? Mama bird would bring them worms. The birds would chew and chew. So they're chewing worms. What did the birds chew? Uppercase. Worms. Period. Number three, why was Drew sad? They grew and grew. They drank the morning dew. One day, they were gone. Drew was sad. He knew they flew away. So that's why he's sad, that whole sentence. He knew they flew away. He misses his little buddies. Why was he sad? He knew they... Flew away. Okay. So it's Friday. It's our last homework of the year. So let's do one more journal entry. This one's all about summertime. Journal entry. Please write in full sentences and put spaces between your words. So every sentence begins with an uppercase letter and ends with punctuation, period, question mark, or exclamation point. Okay, and here's our topic. What do you want to do this summer? What do you want to do this summer? For example, this summer I want to go swimming and... And you'll tell me the things you want to do. Even if you might not get to do that, just tell me what you would want to do. And then after you write, draw a picture of summertime. Okay. So I'll show you what I would write. Please don't copy me because you're having a different summer than I am. Okay. Let's see. So I start my sentence with an uppercase. This summer, I want to see my friends 
and family, period. I want to take my dog on long walks. I'll, that means I will, I'll also read books play games go camping and get ready for next year cuz I'm coming back Still going to be your teacher. I am very excited to teach you again in grade. Four. Okay, let's read it. This summer, I want to see my friends and family. I want to take my dog on long walks. I'll also read books, play games, go camping, and get ready for next year. I am very excited to teach you again in grade four. Yes, sounds good. Now draw a picture of summertime. So I'm not going to draw everything. But I am really excited to take my dog on long walks. And I'm even going to ride my bike and I know she's going to follow me. She follows me everywhere. She does everything I do. And she's really fast and I, she can run faster than I can run. So I'm going to need my bike to get ahead of her. And here's my girl. She's all black. There's her little tail. There's her ears. Oh, she's going to have so much fun. And I'm going really fast. And she's going really fast. And it's a beautiful day. We got some clouds. But we got the nice bright sun. And every day, I'm going to give her so much exercise and play with her. Really excited for that. Okay. Now tell me what you want to do this summer. Maybe you want to hang out with your friends. Maybe you want to paint. Maybe you want to fix your quad or your bike. Fix your tree house. I don't know. Okay, math time. Let's practice counting money again. We're getting good at this. Draw the fewest bills and coins to show the cost of each robot. So for 13, this robot costs $7.58. And the fewest bills, so the smallest amount, and here's all the bills you could use. Here's a $5 bill, a toonie, $2, a loony, $1, quarter, 25 cents, dime, 10 cents, nickel, 5 cents, penny, 1 cent. So to equal $7.58, I'll give a $5 bill, a toonie, two quarters, a nickel, and a penny. That's the quickest way to do it. So for 14, this robot is $9.38. So... I'm going to put a $5 bill. And just to double check, I'm going to add these numbers up. Okay, 
and nine dollars. So I might as well do two toonies, because that's two four. I know five plus four equals nine. Okay, 38 cents. So we'll do a quarter, that's 25 cents. So I have $9.25. I still need 13 more cents. So that means one dime and three pennies. Let's check though, just to be sure. Plus zero dollars, 10 cents. And I might as well count all the pennies at once. Three pennies. Okay, start on the far right. Five, eight, two, three, drop the decimal. Five, four equals nine. So that's nine dollars thirty-eight cents. We got it. Fifteen. This robot eight dollars and seventy-four cents. So another five and a toonie, that's seven, and a loony, that's eight, and two quarters. So now we're at 850. A dime, 860, another dime, 870. And one, two, three, four pennies. That would be 874. 16. Robot, nine dollars sixteen cents. Five dollar bill. A toonie, that's seven dollars. Another toonie, that's nine. A dime, that's nine dollars ten cents. A nickel, that's nine dollars fifteen, and a penny, nine dollars sixteen cents. Read what the girl says. Draw the fewest, the lowest amount of bills and coins to show the money that she has. So she says, I have $6.88. And she says, I have five cents more than you. So what she's saying is, I have five cents more than this amount. So we'll just add it first. Eight plus five equals 13, carry the one. One plus eight equals nine, drop the decimal, drop to six. So we want to make $6.93 in the fewest amount of bills, just like we did with the robots. So that'll be a five and a loony. That's $6 and three quarters. So $6.25, 50, 75 cents. $6.75, a dime, $6.85. How about a nickel? Six dollars ninety cents, and that means there's one, two, three pennies left over. So that means we have one five dollar bill, one loony, three quarters, one dime, one nickel, three pennies. Okay, let's move on to a word problem. This one's tricky, but it's the last day. So let's do a fun one. Let's see if we can figure it out. Might even fool me. Let's see. Word problem. For Valentine's Day, students voted to have a pizza party. There are 27 students in the class, and each will get three slices of pizza. Every pizza has eight slices. How many pizzas will the teacher need to buy so that all students can have three pieces of pizza? Use the box below to show your work. The teacher needs to buy blank pizzas. Okay, we've got some big math to do, but it can be done. Let's figure it out. Okay, so we don't need to know that first line. There are 27 students in the class. So let's write that down. 27 students. We're pulling out the key info. Might as well use our box to help us think. Each will get three slices of pizza. So three slices each. We're just writing this down to help us think. So we don't got to keep reading all those words. Every pizza has eight slices. So one pizza equals eight slices. How many pizzas will the teacher need to buy? Okay, so that's all we need to know to figure it out. Now we gotta do the math. Let's figure out the total number of slices. 
So 27 students times three slices each, okay? Seven times three equals 21 plus, now we'll go to the 10, so we start with a zero. Two times three equals six. So we add those. One plus zero equals one. Two plus six equals eight. So they need 81 slices, okay? And one pizza has eight. So now we need to do some division. 81 pieces of pizza divided by eight. How many times does eight go in to eight? Into 81, sorry. So eight goes into eight one time. And eight goes into one zero times. So now we drop it down. We're going to put a decimal here. Eight goes into 10 once. And that also means there's two left over. And eight goes into 20, eight, 16, two times. And that means there's four left over. And you can keep going and going. So what this means is she needs to buy 10.12 pizzas. Can you do that? Can you call Pizza Hut and say, hey, I want 10.12 pepperoni pizzas? They're going to say, what are you talking about? You either buy 10 or 11, man. We're not giving you one slice of pizza. So the only thing she can do, to be fair, is just buy 11 pizzas. Okay? Because if she only buys 10, that means one kid is not getting his three slices of pizza. Okay? Get it? You get it? <laughs> Good. The teacher needs to buy 11 pizzas. You understand? So, let's go on to number of the day. And don't worry if you don't understand that division. It's just, that's the best way to do it. Okay? That's a hard question. But it's the last day. And you can see it. It, it was possible. Right? Multiplication and division just saved the day. We saved that poor kid from not getting his slice of pizza. Okay. One more number of the day before summertime. My number is 4,909. Record on a number line. Where's it going to go? Zero. 10,000 right in the middle is 5,000. Oh, that's very close to 4,909. Probably right there. 4,909. Put a bubble on it. Okay, what my number looks like using base tens. Four thousands. One, two, three, four. Put a bubble on it. Nine hundreds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All of them. Bubble, bubble, bubble. Zero tens. Don't touch it. Nine ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Bubble. Record a number pattern starting at your number. We start at 4,909. Let's go up by... 3, 4909, 4912, 4915, 4918, 4921, 4924. My number in words, 4,909. 4,009. Hundred nine. Cool. Okay, let's do the top. Thousands place, we have four. Hundreds place, we have nine. Tens place, we have zero. And the ones place, nine. Round to the nearest hundred. We can either go down to 4,900 or up to 5,000. If your number is 4,950 or greater, you're going to go up. Our number is less than that, 4,909. So we're going down to 4,900 plus 10. The ones place will go up by 1. 4,919. Take away 10 because it's a 0. 
We can't go less than zero, so let's just do a quick calculation. 49, oh, 09, take away 10. 9 take away 0 equals 9. 0 take away 1, can't do it. Borrow from the 9. 9 turns to 8. 0 turns to 10. 10 take away 1 equals 9. Drop to 8. Drop to 4. <gasps> 4,899. Odd or even? Odd numbers end with 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. Even numbers end with 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. Our number ends with a 9, so it's odd. Put some check marks in there. One less. So now the ones place is going down by one. So four, nine, zero, eight instead of nine. One more. So now it's going to go up. What's one more than nine? It's 10. So 49, 10. 4,910. Okay, last one. Thousands. We know we have four thousands. And that would equal 4,000. Hundreds, we have 9. That would be 900. Tens is 0, so it's still 0. Ones is 9, and that equals 9. So we have a 4 in the thousands place, a 9 in the hundreds, a 0 in the tens, and a 9 in the ones. All right. That was the final number of the day. Right on. So let's go to Epic Books in just a second, but I want to show you the final page on this book. You might have already looked at it, but just in case. So there's a very fun and hard maze for you to try. But this is what I want to show you. It says the end. I will pick up all your homework on June 19th. It's actually already past June 19th because of things that happened. We weren't able to go to your houses. So really, this is your summer homework. But if you finished it, or at least if you tried, you are awesome. You're awesome for trying your best. Okay. And it makes me happy that you're watching this video and that you're trying to do your homework. Have a great summer, Wingnut. And this is me. Hi, Wingnut. Okay. I think there is actually one more page. Some stickers. What do we got? Have a great summer. We worked hard this year. You've earned a break. I know it was a weird ending. But when we were at school, we did a lot of good things. I hope we're back in September. Summertime. Fun in the sun. Crabs. <laughs> summertime. Have fun. Maybe have some watermelon. Play with your dog if you have one. And here's me again. See you next year. I will be your grade four teacher. I can't wait to see you again. I'm going to teach you so much. You remember all that really hard multiplication and division I did today? I'm going to pass that on to you if you come to school. You're going to be a math genius next year. Okay, let's head on over to Epic Books for one more story. Talia. Lovitz Marshall, illustrated by Francesca Asarelli, Carbon Publishing. Talia loved visiting her grandparents, especially in early fall, when their farm was full of wonderful smells and tastes. Talia, would you like to help prepare the Yom Kippur breakfast for tomorrow? asked Grandma. Wow, thought Talia, a yum Kippur breakfast. She rubbed her tummy and answered, sure. Grandma put on her apron, took out a recipe and said, first, we'll make a kugel. 
We need three eggs. You know where to find them. Talia went to the hen house. Yum, she thought, as she checked the hen's nests. Delicious, fresh eggs. She carried the eggs very, very carefully back to her grandmother. Now we'll need some milk, said Grandma. You can help Grandpa milk the cow. Talia went to the barn with Grandpa. She held the bucket while Grandpa milked the cow. Then Grandpa showed Talia how to do the milking. A stream of milk squirted into the bucket. Yum, thought Talia. Tasty, fresh milk. She carried the full bucket of milk very, very carefully back inside. Next, we'll need cottage cheese, noodles, raisins, sour cream, and sugar, said Grandma. Yum, thought Talia, my favorites. Talia searched the refrigerator and the pantry. She carried each ingredient very, very carefully to her grandmother. They boiled the noodles and mixed in the raisins, sour cream, sugar, milk, and eggs. Then they put the kugel in the oven to bake. For the rest of the day, Talia helped Grandma cook. They made cookies and cakes, tuna salad, and blintzes. Yum, said Talia. I can't wait to eat all this food. Grandma smiled. We'll have to wait, she said. It's for Yom Kippur, for the breakfast. But the next morning, Grandma gave Talia fruit and cereal as usual. And the rest of the family didn't eat at all. Everyone except for Grandma and Talia dressed nicely and went to synagogue. Why didn't anyone eat? Talia asked after the others had gone. It's a fast day, Grandma explained. Oh, said Talia, nodding. It must be a very fast day if no one had time for breakfast. But don't worry, said Grandma. When everyone comes back, it will be time for the Yom Kippur breakfast. The house was very quiet that morning. Talia read her books and played with her dolls. Then she went to the barn. She patted the pony, played with the lambs, and cuddled the rabbits. She looked at the leaves on the trees. They were turning beautiful fall colors. Every so often, one fell to the ground. It did not seem like a very fast day. Talia went back inside. When is the big breakfast? She asked again. After sunset, said Grandma. And it's a breakfast not a breakfast. Talia looked puzzled. It's like a big breakfast, Grandma explained, but it comes at the end of a fast day. I don't think it's a fast day, Talia said. I think it's a slow day. Grandma laughed. A fast day is a day when people don't eat, she told Talia. On this holiday, Jews fast and pray and think about how to be better people. That doesn't sound very yummy, said Talia. I thought today was Yum Kippur. I thought it was going to be delicious. It's Yom Kippur, said her grandmother, but it will be delicious. Just wait. First, People spend time thinking about things they might have done better. 
If someone did something wrong or something that hurt someone's feelings, this is a time to ask for forgiveness. Talia thought for a minute. Grandma, she said, remember that lamp my doll broke? Her grandmother nodded. It was me, Talia said, not my doll. I'm sorry I broke it, and I'm sorry I lied. Her grandmother hugged her. That felt delicious. And I'm sorry I yelled at you then, her grandmother said. Will you forgive me? They hugged again. Yum, said Talia. That feels really good. Then Talia thought of something else. Grandma, she said, I know we already made the food, but won't you need help setting the table? Grandma smiled. Yes, I will. Can you help me? Of course, said Talia. So at sunset, she carried napkins, silverware, and dishes to the table. She set out plates of bagels and pitchers of juice. Grandma took the rest of the food out of the refrigerator. Yum, they said together when everything was ready. Thanks to Talia and her grandmother, they all enjoyed a very sweet yum Kippur. Aww. That's nice to help your grandma, and it's nice to admit your mistakes and ask for forgiveness. Okay, that was our last book. There's other Talia books. So next year on the Chromebooks, maybe you can read these too. Okay, Wingnuts. This is the end of the last video of the last homework package. And here's me. And I'm going to wave. I'm going to say bye-bye. Bye, Wingy. And here's my buttons. Here's my little legs. Little feet. My skateboard. And my pocket and my pens. Here's some hair, and I want to say to you, have a great summer. I can't wait to see you next year. Bye for now. Okay. Have a great summer. I can't wait to see you next year. And bye for now. Take care of yourself, okay? I will see you in grade four. Adios. Au revoir. Bye-bye.